Have you seen any ticks? Welcome back. Survive Outdoors, Dan Williams here. Today we're going to talk about all of the American ticks, all the ticks that are in the United States, and all of their illnesses. Thought it would be really helpful for you to have that, and if you go down into our description section, I'm going to have these all listed. You can print it off, clip it, laminate it, put it in your backpack, keep it on you. Second thing is, is, if you get a tick on you, try to keep it, put it in a plastic bag, put it in a container, bring it into your doc or healthcare provider so we can identify it. That would be really helpful. So the male and female tick are, they look differently. So that's another reason it's important to bring the tick in. A male American wood tick, you know, does clearly does not look like the female. And the Lone Star Tick, the male Lone Star Tick, doesn't have the white dot on its back. So there's all these variations. I want to tell you now, if you like the information that we're giving you, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, you'll get notifications of all the upcoming videos. So let's get started. The American Dog Tick, also called the Wood Tick. It carries Ehrlichiosis, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Tularemia, which is Rabbit Fever, and Tick Paralysis. A lot of people think Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is just in the Rockies and west of the Rockies. Not true. Five years ago, I had an eight-year-old girl that was diagnosed with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and she was camping in Wisconsin. So, yes, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever can occur in other areas. Tularemia, also called rabbit fever, back in the day, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, hunters that would clean their rabbits, they would nick themselves, they could get rabbit fever tularemia if the rabbit was infected by that tick. Um, it used to be thought that the first freeze would kill out those sick rabbits. Not true. You could get that at any point in time, January, whenever. Next one is the black-legged deer tick. This is the one that carries a bunch of illnesses. Now the black-legged deer tick, there is two different species, one in the Midwest, South, and Southeastern and the Eastern states. And then there's the western black-legged deer tick. I can't tell them apart. And the black-legged deer tick is the one that is notorious for carrying Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, babesiosis, borrelia, ehrlichiosis, Powassan disease, which is a virus, Bartonella, and tick paralysis. Tick paralysis is very, very common in uh, scratch that. Tick paralysis is actually uncommon, but when you get it, it's more common in like children eight years old and younger. And what happens is, is that their legs get weak. Uh, they eventually get in a situation where they can't walk and it ascends up the body and affects the arms. When they're brought in to a hospital, it's usually all hands on deck panic because they don't know what's going on. We just don't know. So we'll do a shotgun approach, lab work, MRI, why is this child having a hard time walking? And if you do a proper history, find out they've been camping, hiking in the park, and scour their head, you'll find a tick, you remove the tick, within two hours, they're fine, they're cured. It's, it's a very dramatic presentation and a very dramatic treatment result by just removing the tick. Now with Lyme disease, for everyone out there and providers, I want you to know that 30% of ticks that carry Lyme have a concomitant illness with that, usually babesiosis or ehrlichiosis, 30%. That's really high. I had a patient who was negative for Lyme but positive for ehrlichiosis. Now, why is that important? Well, ehrlichiosis and Lyme disease is, is cured with doxycycline, but babesiosis, that is treated with Zithromax, Cleosin, a different class of antibiotics. So even though you have a negative Lyme, it behooves you not to check for Ehrlichia as well as Babesiosis if you have that person come in and they're symptomatic and you know it's a deer tick. So important. Brown dog tick. This is, this tick carries Ehrlichia, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and Q Fever. Next is the Gulf Coast tick, which looks dramatically similar to the um, American dog tick, and the Gulf Coast tick has, carries Ehrlichia, Rickettsii, 
Parkiti Rickettsii, wonderful name. And then the Lone Star Tick, and that um, carries Ehrlichii, uh, carries uh, Heartland Virus, Starry South Tick, Southern Tick Associated Rash Illness, and um, Tularemia. Soft Tick. The soft tick, very interesting tick. This tick is unlike the hard ticks. It's in the suburbs of cities, it's in rock crevices, it's in old cabins that you may rent. Uh, guys go on a hunt, hunting out west, you know, and they rent a cabin, it can be in the walls of a, a log home. This tick comes out, will bite at night, and only bites for seconds less than two minutes. That's why this tick, it's very hard to, you don't find this tick on you for the most part. And the soft tick is, no, is found in, this um, is noted for carrying tick-borne relapsing fever. And it is noted to be found in 15 states, documented right now as far as that illness. And tick-borne relapsing fever is an interesting presentation. What happens is, is that a person comes in, seems like they have a viral syndrome, they have a rash, you know, fever, they're fatigued, they're weak, last for three or four days, and then they get better. And the healthcare provider, doctor, chalks it up to a viral syndrome. Then the following week, they come back in, they have fever again, three or four days, and it goes away. So that's that presentation. Pacific Coast Tick uh, is um, basically that tick has Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, uh, Rickettsia pox, Rickettsia pox is very uncommon, but when it does bite you, it leaves a very dark center called an eschar that sloughs off, very similar to like a recluse. However, the center of this bite does not get necrotic and die and you have a crater. It doesn't do that. Then there is a, in the last five to six years, uh, in California only, uh, there's an illness called 364D Rickettsii. And that illness is pretty rare. There's only been a few cases of that found out in California. The last tick um, in 2017 is, was documented to be in the United States. It's the Asian long-horned tick. This tick for years and years was out east, way out east, Pakistan, India, other countries that has been noted to get humans sick and has caused death. There's a little bit of a panic now. It's been found in Pennsylvania and some other uh, states. In 2019, there was one case documented that a person got bit by that tick, but they did not get sick. There's been no evidence that this tick is carrying the illness that will hurt or kill humans to this point. However, interesting about this tick, it doesn't need a mate to reproduce. So this tick then reproduces on its own and in large quantities, and there has been some cattle deaths with this tick where it literally esanguinated the blood from the cow. So stay tuned for that. My prediction is in the next five to 10 years, it may get worse. <clears throat> so those are all of the United States ticks and their illnesses. Uh, remember, save the tick, put it in a bag, put it in a container, uh, bring it in, very helpful. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind, stay safe, stay tickless. Take care.